That's fascinating. This is how the idea of sustainability gets built, not just into the environmental approach, but also the economic approach. Yeah, and the Dabbawalas are a great example of the economic approach and where sustainability can be applied. The Dabbawalas are very famous in Bombay. They have a famous system of markings, which brings food and Dabbas to thousands of office goers uh, from their homes. And it's a great systems design and where these guys never get the Dabbas mixed up, even though it's a huge and complex operation. But even they've become very alert to sustainability issues with regards to the food waste generated in the Dabbas. is a great example of a closed loop system. So we've looked at environmental factors and economic factors. And do you remember what the third factor of sustainability was? That's right, the socio-cultural factor. Would you like to tell us about that one, Gitanjali? You know, it's wonderful that designers are becoming more aware of the communities they're impacting with their work and, you know, the social impact of their design. And for this point, actually, I would like to share what Ravi has to say. So another important aspect to design for sustainability is keeping in mind the social and cultural factors. How do we include local communities, local um, groups of people, uh, and make them active stakeholders in the product that we are designing? Uh, now in this, I'd like to talk about livelihood especially with respect to uh, the craft communities, which is something that uh, I feel quite strongly about. Uh, we in India have the luxury of a uh, whole diversity of crafts and traditions that have been in uh, play for many hundreds of years. And they come from a context where they have actually incorporated sustainable design into their products by way of using natural materials. Also being able to um, regenerate whatever materials that they may be using from, from nature. So they have a certain culture of doing that also. Uh, so if we can tie that up with some of the mainstream products that are being designed, then it creates a much more steady livelihood stream for some of these craftspeople who are heavily skilled um, because uh, unfortunately in our circumstances right now, the craft community is working in parallel to the other, uh, to the other uh, economy. And what is happening is many of these craftspeople are subsist subsisting on something um, uh, you know, anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 rupees a month. So how can we, uh, as designers, be very conscious of the fact that we can produce some of these products using their skills and improving the elegance of the products, but at the same time creating a livelihood stream for them, which is steady and they can also improve their lot. So as an example for uh, design for sustainability, keeping the social and cultural factors in mind, Daily Dump is an excellent example. So the daily dump was innovated by the designer Poonam Bir Kasturi, who was concerned about household waste management. 
So she explored ways to get householders to compost at home with organic wastes like vegetable peels and leftover food into terracotta pots. Terracotta? Why isn't that fragile? Well, terracotta is porous and so it controls the excessive water that is discharged during decomposition. And using terracotta provided the potters with a steady income, while simultaneously helping urban families uh, to do their bit to solve the city's waste problem. So the system actually changed the behavior of families and entire residential areas in disposing of their kitchen waste. So there's the third lens where the socio-cultural aspect of sustainability gets addressed. Daily Dump has partners in various cities and their website gives more details. The link is given in our resource tab. You can see it later. Well, I'm sure you touched upon some of these things in your design and society module. We did, but it's always good to have a fresh perspective for a broader and even a deeper understanding.